Nasser. Yes, Shani, how are you? I'm good, you little sneak. How did you get in here early? <laughs> From the practice uh, group. Ah, interesting, interesting. Hmm, uh, how because are you? the last uh, lesson I uh, missed it, and I was very upset about it. Oh, no worries, it's okay. Did you at least watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, we didn't um, you, Sofiane, like all uh, Cecilia, like all the norm, Fred, Federico, like all the normal. Um, except Coco yes. only. Yeah, except for Coco. <laughs> yeah, so. Mm -hmm. but, very good. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're here now. Thank you. Oh yeah, and Terrence wasn't here last time either. All right, good. Hey, Federico. Good evening. Hello, hello. Any Bisam, how are you? Terrence, how are you today? Fine, and you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Sofiane, how are you feeling? Are you there, Sofiane? And let's see who else. Uh, Mustafa, how are you? Fine, and you? I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. And Juan, welcome. How are you? Hi, hi, Chani. I am to fine, you. thank you. What about you? I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. Beautiful now. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I have a little bit of a headache again today, but hopefully it'll go away. So. And um, is it Amina? Amina or Amina? Nope. <laughs> okay. Let's see, I think people are having connection issues. Hey, Sofiane, how are you? Hi, Shnei, how are you? I'm good, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, but I'm still yeah. sick. So, yeah, I, I can still hear it in your nose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, me too. And Mustafa, how are you? Mustafa. Yes, yes. Yay, there you are. How are you? <laughs> Fine. And you, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. And then, um, Ibizam, is your mic working? <laughs> yes, today I'm learning 32 new vocabulary. <laughs> Oh no, not not you, Mustafa. Um, it beats them. Okay. I'm not sure. Her mic's working. And then is Amina there or Amina?
Is your mic working? <laughs> okay, if you guys are having problems hearing, it's probably coming from your connection. I do hear an echo. I'm not sure who it's I'm not sure who it's coming from, but I can hear myself. So you might have two windows open and that could be the issue. So make sure that you only have one window open. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, it's your guys' connection then. So um, I don't, yeah, just do, your, just do your best. So everybody else can hear me though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Okay. So, all right. So, Abitsam and Amina, um, or Amina, I, I don't know what how to pronounce your name, but um, just do your best. Um, make sure that you only have one window open because I'm still hearing an echo. So, no, it's not from her. Okay. So, um, just make sure that you have only one window open, and we'll go from there. So, all right, guys. So, <clears throat> this is a two-hour class, and we are going to be hopefully finishing up um, godliness today. Anything that we don't finish will be homework. So, um, anything that we don't finish for godliness will be homework, and uh, we will talk about it um, on Wednesday. Yeah, I keep hearing an echo. Tonight, Somebody, I'm, uh, uh, go ahead, Terrence. No, I'm uh, I'm going to unmute myself. Okay. Just check if it's my problem comes from okay. my computer. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Is it gone? It's gone. Okay. All right. It's Terrence. <laughs> so, all right. No worries, though, Terrence. No problem. <laughs> so. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, all right. So, Terrence, Terrence is good. Terrence knows the drill. He'll just stay muted until he wants to talk. So, we're good. Okay, guys. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, we're gonna uh, have a lot to do today. Hopefully, uh, we'll get through a lot since a lot of you have um, been in this class over and over and over again. Um, Amina, I'm not sure why you can't hear me. It's got to be your connection. So um, anyway, so my name is Shanae, uh, for those of you who don't know me, and um, I'm from the United States. I live in California. Happy Friday to everyone. So I'm excited that it is Friday. Thanks, and uh, yes, <laughs> yes, and um, after class, I'm going to treat myself to um, there's a woman that lives in my town from Italy, and she has a fantastic sandwich shop. And I haven't been there in a very, 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 very long time. And after class today, I am going to her sandwich shop and having a sandwich. <laughs> so, Good. yes, Good. yes, I'm excited. <laughs> so, um, oh, nice. her name is, is Maria Matano, and I love her dearly. So, um, she's great. But um, it's her, her sandwiches are really expensive. But they're worth it, so I don't go very often. But today I'm, I'm going. Do I'm you, treating myself. Do you speak Italian, by the way? No, no, only ciao. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I can teach you Italian if you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, ciao and uh, what is Panino. It? It's a Please. sandwich. What is what is sandwich? Panino. Panino. Yeah. You know, how do you? Uh, she makes these really awesome salads too, um, like pasta salads. Mm. But she has one with garbanzo beans. Do you guys know what garbanzo beans are? Yep. Do you know? Yeah. Um, so 
I'm going to have some of that too. <laughs> and garbanzo beans are really good for the baby. So double score. <laughs> 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 so, all right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's go around the room and just have everyone introduce themselves, and um, then we'll start talking about Winesburg. So, Amina, is your mic working? Okay, can you try talking? Yes, I'm talking. Ah, yes. Okay. But I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, I don't know why you can't hear me. <laughs> Everyone else can. So, um... I hear everybody except you, teacher. <laughs> That's not good. I don't know. I'm from Algeria. Okay. I'll give exactly. Okay. Yes, I am working as an accountant. Ah, okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, welcome to class. Welcome to class. So, um, Federico, would you like to introduce yourself? Of course. Hello, everybody. My name is Federico. I'm from Argentina. I live in Spain. And I'm uh, really happy to be here again uh, because I missed the last two weeks. Um, well, I'm excited for where we are going to read to today. Yes, absolutely. And um, Ibizim? I love technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'll come back. Abis I know Abizam is from um, Algeria as well. So, um, and because the meteorites. Say that again? Maybe it's because the meteorites. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. Um, Juan, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, yes, I am Juan. I am living in Mexico, Mexico City, and I work as a carpenter. Very good. And Mustafa? <laughs> yes. Hi, Shine. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. And Nasser? Yes, uh, my name is Nasser. I'm from Yemen. I'm 30 years old. I'm calling uh, addictive. Yes. And <laughs> Sofian? Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Sofian. I'm from Algeria. And I'm 17 years old. Wow. There's one from Algeria that can hear me. What's your <laughs> secret? What's your secret, Sofian? No. Uh, okay. You have to refresh the page and it will work. Ah. Uh. Um, and then, uh, Terence, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Terence. I am 42. I am from Madrid, Spain. Uh, sorry because I missed last week uh, class, but I am hungry to know more about Jesse Bentley and his grandson. Yes, absolutely. So, um, real quick. So, on Wednesday, we started reading um, part three. Um, which is actually about Louise Bentley, 
So we're kind of taking a jump um, in time. So um, we're talking about Louise Bentley, who is Jesse's daughter. Uh, for those of you, I know some of you missed, um, but if you remember the when we left Jesse from part one, he was yelling out to God to give him a son, and his wife was in labor, and his wife gave birth to a daughter, not a son, and then his wife died. So Louise Bentley has grown up knowing that her father um, wanted a son and didn't really want her, so she grew up not ever feeling loved and has been neurotic um, and moody from, um, from the very start. So what we started reading about last week was when she was 15, when she was 15 years old, she went to live with the Hardy family in Winesburg. So she went to live with the Hardy family in Winesburg, and the Hardys had three kids, two girls and a boy, and she, she moved in with them so that she could go to school. And she was very good at school. She was very smart and um, did very well. Well, the girls, the Hardy girls, hated her for that because they had no interest in school, um, had no interest in studying, and their father, Mr. Hardy, he kind of showed favoritism to this stranger who was living with them, who was Louise, because she was so smart and did so well in school. So when we left on Wednesday, the last part that we read about was um, Louise was feeling very Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no, no, no. Then, <laughs> then you Please, definitely don't, won't don't hear me, Amina. <laughs> so you definitely won't hear me if you do that. Um, um, she was uh, feeling very isolated and alone, um, and she realized that she would never, ever, ever um, become friends with these girls. So she has now kind of developed a crush on John Hardy, who is the son. And we know from reading parts one and two that she will eventually marry John Hardy because, as we know, David Hardy, who is Louise's son, um, is uh, the names match up. So yeah. it's, not hard, it's not hard to figure out that Louise is going to eventually marry John. So that's kind of where we left off. Um, we are on page three, I believe. Um, yeah, we're going to start with page three. Let me give you the link. So um, we're going to start with page three. Um, hopefully we're going to get through all of um, part three today and then um, it, for this class. And then for the second hour, we're going to start on part four. So um, Amina, can you hear me now? Federico, I'm going to have you um, start reading for us. Okay. If you yes. can read the, the first paragraph of page three for me. Yes, of course. The mind of the country girl became filled with the idea of drawing close to the young man. She thought that in him may be found the quality she had all her life been seeking in people. It seemed to her that between herself and all the other people in the world, a wall had been built up and that she was living just on the edge of some warm inner side, side, circle of life that must be quite open and understandable to others. She became obsessed with the thought that it wanted by a 
courageous act on her part to make all of her association with people something quite different and that it was possible by such an act to pass into a new life as one opens the door and goes into a room. Day and night she thought of the matter but although she thinks that one is so earnestly was something very warm and close it had as yet not conscious connection with sex. It had not become that definitive and her mind had only a light upon the person of John Hardy because he was at hand and unlike his sister had not been unfriendly to her. Mm -hmm. Good. So um, what is this thing that she is wanting from people? Affection. Affection. Uh -huh. Affection and... Love, love. Love, yes. And she wanted love. Yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the heart. <laughs> so, yeah, she wanted affection and love. But in her mind, is that connected with physical intimacy? Is that connected with sex? No. No. No, no it's not. She hasn't made that leap. She's still she's I mean she's 15 you know she's you know she's pretty immature um, but she she's at least mature enough to understand that she is missing um, love and affection but she's too immature to understand that some people um, especially boys at that age might think of love and affection as sex so it's not that she's going after John Hardy because she wants to be promiscuous or she wants sex from him. She just, in her mind, all she sees is that John is the one person who's been nice to her. So she's obsessed with this idea of getting love and affection from him because he's nice to her. For her, that has nothing to do with physical intimacy. Um, but we are going to see what happens. Um, Abisam, are you able to hear me now? No? No luck. No luck. Okay. Amina, you can hear? Yes, I can. Yay! Mm. All right. <laughs> Very good. Would you like to do some reading for us? Yes. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Um, if you'd like to read this next paragraph, that would be great. The Hardy sisters, Mary and Harriet, were both older than Louise. In a certain kind of college of the world, they were years older. They lived as the, all of the young women of my dead western town life. In those days, Young women did not go out of our towns to Eastern colleges and ideas in regards to social class had hardly begun to exist. The daughter of a laborer was in much the same social position as the daughter of a farmer or a merchant. And there were no leisure classes. A girl was nice or she was not nice. If a nice girl she had a young man who come to her house to see her on Sunday and on Wednesday evenings. Sometimes she went with her young man to a dance or church social. At other times she received him at the house and was given the use of the parlor for that purpose. No one introduced open her for uh, hours. Intruded open her. For hours, the two sat behind closed doors. Sometimes the lights were turned low, low, and the young men and women embarrassed, checks become hot and hair disarranged. After a year or two, if this, the impu impulse within them become strong and insistent enough, they marry. Good, very good. All right, so um, Mary and Harriet, the uh, the Hardy sisters, um, 
what is the difference between Louise and the Hardy sisters? The age. The age, yes. Physical age. Um, the Hardy sisters are older, but they're also older how? It's not just in physical age that they are older. How else are they older? In a certain kind of knowledge of the word. Yeah, knowledge. what does that mean? They are more knowledge. More experienced. More mature. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes, they're more experienced, they're more mature in knowing how the world works. Whereas Louise really has no clue. Um, they have this idea of a girl was nice or a girl was not nice. Okay. What does that mean? And it goes on to talk about what a nice girl does. We haven't read about what a not nice girl does, but what do you think the difference is between a nice girl and a not nice girl? Uh, nice girl will be married. Will marry. Eventually, yes. yes. Before yeah. that, though, before a nice girl gets married, what is? What is? We. And, she has. No, uh, she, oh, um, Amina. She had a young man who came to her house. That's uh, the nice. That's girl. part of it. I think she stays virgin. I mean, yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. There you go. Yes, a nice girl is a girl who stays a virgin until she gets married. Is not a girl who is promiscuous. Does everybody know the word promiscuous? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He has bad manners. Um, bad man, bad, bad sexual manners. Yes. A, promis <laughs> a promiscuous girl it runs around with lots of different boys. So, um, and you know what, we, we actually still use this term in America today. Um, I remember even when I was growing up, my mom would, you know, if I was hanging around someone, she would be like, that's not a nice girl. I don't think she's a nice girl. Because moms can pick up on that kind of stuff. And my mom was usually always right. How? I don't know. But she usually was right that the girl was... Um, very free with her self and with boys. Um, no, Martin, it doesn't have anything to do with prostitution. Prostitution is different from, promis from promiscuous. Yeah. They do because they like, no, because they want to, to, to gain or earn money. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Prostitution is, is when you make money for having sex. Promiscuous. Um, we also have another word that's not a very pleasant word to use, but um, another word for promiscuous is she's a slut. So, you know, that's that's another way to say it, that she no. just, she likes the attention and the affections of men without getting any money for it. There so, are a lot of words for that. There are a lot of words, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just one of the more common ones. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, so that's the difference between a nice girl and a not nice girl. So what are some things that a nice girl would do with a boy, a nice girl? Invite him to her house and uh, go uh, in a social places like church or mm -hmm. in front of other people's. Not in a secret. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the, the boy would come to the house on Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays and Wednesdays are the days when uh, Protestant Christians go to church. So basically after church, uh, they would have the, the young man over to the house. Um, and then, like you mentioned, also to go to a church social, so public places. Um, if... If they were to be alone, where were they alone at? Mm. 
would they go up to the girl's bedroom and close the door no, and be no. alone there? No, but no. no. Yeah, in the parlor. The parlor is basically like what we would say today is kind of like a living room or a family room. Um, a parlor is a place where you would receive guests. Well, so um, not, it's not a high, high place. I mean, this is where, for example, the people who are around the house can can see you. For example, if you're there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And back then, some of them did have doors, so you could close the parlor doors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would do that, but nice girls still wouldn't, Don't do it. they wouldn't take that next step. If anything, there might be a hug, you know, and they would get all like, oh, hot and bothered by a hug. And um, if it says um, after a year or two, if the impulse within them became strong and insistent enough, they married. What are the, what kind of impulse are they talking about? What's the impulse? Sexual desire, or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If, if they, yeah, if they want um, more, just sexual. Does if if they feel that, you know, they want to be with this person in that next physical way, then the next step was to get married. You didn't just do it. You got married first. So, um, boy, have times changed, um, at least here in the United States. Um, so, yeah, so that is, that's the difference. And then you can imagine a not nice girl just fill in X, Y, and Z about what a not nice girl does. So, um, times. say that again. That they were different times. Yes, yes, very different times, very different times. Um, Juan, can you read the last two paragraphs of this page? Uh, in St. Louis here? Uh, one starting with one evening. What one in? Okay. Yeah. So one evening during her winter in Winsburg, Louise had an adventure that gave a new impulse to her desire to break down the wall that she told stood between her and John Hardy. It was Wednesday, and immediately after the evening meal. After her put on his hat and uh, went away. John John brought the wood and put into the bus in Louis's room. You do work hard, don't you? He says hardly. And then before she could answer, he also went away. May I continue? Yes, please. Louis heard he go out and of the house and had at night desire to run after him. Opening her window, she leaned out and called softly. John, dear John, come back. Don't go away. The might the, the might was cloudy and she could not see far into the darkness. But as she wait she finds she finds it she couldn't hear a soft little noise as of someone going to toast through the trees in the old church. She was frightened and closed the window quickly. For an hour, she moved about room trembling with excitement, and when she couldn't no longer bear the waiting, she crept into the hall and down the stair into the closed light room that opened up the parallel. Good. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, what is Louise, what is her desire at this point? She wants to be with him. Yeah, she, to break the yeah. watch. She wants to talk with him. Yeah, she wants, she wants to have a conversation with him. Um, he left before she was able to have a conversation with him. So she it's it's almost become an obsession with her she um especially since he kind of opened that door so to speak 
since he said to her, you know, you sure do work hard, don't you? Meaning she works hard with her studies in school. Um, and, um, but since she didn't even have a chance to answer, it's become that much more important for her to talk to him. Because like I said, it's almost like he opened the door. He, um, he mentions, you know, he, he says something to her and that kind of gives her license to want to speak with him more. Um, let's keep going. Um, hi, Coco. Hi, Shanae. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. All right. So we're going to, we're on page four. I'll give you guys the link. Um, Mustafa, can you read the next two paragraphs for this page? Yes. Uh, Louise had decided that she would perform the courage act that had for weeks been in her mind. She was convinced that John hardly had uh, sorry, concealed, that John concealed. yes uh, himself in the orchard been, uh, beneath beneath uh, beneath her window and she was determined to find him and tell him that she wanted him to come close to her to hold her in his arm to tell her of the thoughts and the dreams and to listen while she told him her thought and the dreams. In the darkness, it will be easier to say things. She whispered to herself as, the, as she stood in the little room groping for the door. Uh, continue. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. And then suddenly, Louise realized that she was not alone in the house. In the par uh, parole on the other side of the door, a man's voice spoke uh, softly and the door opened. Louise just, has, just had time to conceal herself in a little opening beneath, beneath the stairway. Then Mary hardly, accompanied by her young man, came into the little dark room. What's the name of uh, beneath and conceal? Beneath means like under. Under and, and mm -hmm. it's a it's like a prep it's like a prep it's a preposition. preposition. So yes. um yeah so you have you have stairs and she is beneath the stairs mm -hmm. so she's okay. hiding under I need a new pen so she's she's hiding underneath the stairs um yeah and then what was the other word? Uh, console. Oh, concealed? Concealed, concealed yes. means to hide. Concealed means to hide. Mm -hmm. okay. Concealed Thank means you. to hide. No problem. So, yeah, so she, she's convinced that John was basically almost waiting for her. Um, so she decides to kind of go downstairs and check it out. But then something kind of unexpected happens. And what is that unexpected thing that happens? She thinks she's by herself, but what does she kind of run into? Okay. Mm -hmm. She had was a young man. Yeah, she came across when. Yeah, a young man and who? Mary Hardy. Yeah, and Mary. So it's one of the Hardy sisters. It's one of the Hardy sisters with this young man who are coming into the parlor and mm -hmm. she definitely wasn't expecting that um nasser can you go ahead and continue this for me uh re go ahead and read the next um the go ahead and read the next two paragraphs okay sure for an hour louise sat on the floor in the darkness and listened without words mary hardy with the aid of the man who had come to spend the evening with her, brought to the, to the country girl a knowledge of men and women, putting her, her head down until she was curled into a little ball, she lay perfectly still. It seemed to her that by some strange impulse of the gods, a great gift had been brought to Mary Hardy and she couldn't understand the 
older woman's determined protest. The young man took Mary Hardy into his arms and kissed her. When she struggled and laughed, he both held her the more tightly. For an hour, the contest between them went on and then they went back into the parlor and Louise escaped up the stairs. I hope you were quiet out there. You must not disturb the little mouse at her studies. She heard Harriet saying to her sister as she stood by her own door in the hallway above. Good. All right. So, um, what is going on between Mary and her bo and her bow? That's that's the old term. It's called a bow. What's going on? Hot stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely. There's some hot stuff going on. Oh, Woo! Um, yeah, for an hour. I know. This guy's never mind. I'm not going to say that. Um, so, yeah. Th so, there's there's some stuff going on. Um, is, is Mary a nice girl? No. Apparently, no. Kind of... Kind of yes, kind of no. I mean, she is bringing him to the house, but she's also kind of sneaking around about it. She and playing. say that again. No, she was playing with him. Yeah, and she is playing with him. Absolutely. You know, she um, she's she, now they, they they didn't they didn't do the deed, so to speak. But it's very clear from this that he wanted to, and she's trying to be a nice girl and keep telling him no. But she's also pushing the envelope a lot farther than a lot of girls would have during that time. In fact, who scolds her for, for it? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Coco, um, got some crazy background noise going on, Coco. Um, yeah, um, who scolds her for what she's doing and why? Her sister. Her sister, yeah, Harriet does. And she says, I hope you were quiet out there. Um, you must not disturb the little mouse at her studies. Who's she talking about? Louise. Yeah, she's talking Louise. about Louise. Yeah, and both of them are totally clueless that Louise was there the entire time watching mm. all of this happen. Yeah, yeah. We also have this little passage where it says, um, a great gift had been brought to Mary Hardy, and she could not understand, she being Louise, she could not understand the older woman's determined protest. How does Louise interpret this man's affection towards Mary? She did. She totally liked it. She, and this is, this is kind of what's happening is she's getting kind of confused. She's confusing physical affection, physical intimacy for real, true, intimate love feelings. She doesn't see this guy as some horny guy who just wants to get in Mary's pants. She sees him as, I know I'm really blunt, um, she sees this guy as being very affectionate and loving towards Mary because she's never had that. She's never understood what it means to have any sort of love whatsoever. And so you can kind of see where this is kind of taking kind of a disastrous turn where someone who, especially a young girl, who's never had love before can start to confuse yeah, physical totally. intimacy with mental and intimacy from the heart. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah absolutely.
Um, Sophie Ann, can you finish this page off for us? Okay. Louise wrote a note to John Hardy, and late that night, when all in the house were asleep, she kept she crept downstairs and slept it under his door. She was afraid that if she did not do the thing at once, her courage would fail. In the in the note, she tried to be quite defined. Definite. Definite, Definite uh -huh. about what she wanted. I want someone to love me, and I want to love someone. She wrote, "If you are the one for me, I want you to come into the orchard at night and make noise under my window. It will be easy for me to crawl down over the shed and come to you. I am thinking about it all time. So, if you are to come at all, you must come soon." For a long time, Louise did not know what would be the outcome of her bold attempt to secure for herself a lover, in a way she still did not know whether or not she wanted him to come. Sometimes it seems to her that to be held tightly and kissed was the whole secret of life, and then new impulse came and she was terribly afraid. The age-old woman's desire to be possessed had taken possession of her, but so vague was her notion of life that it seemed to her just the touch of John Hardy's hand upon her own hand was satisfied. She wondered if would, if he would understand that at the table next next day, while Albert while Albert Hardy talked and the two girls whispered and laughed. She did not look at John, but at the table. And as soon as possible, escaped. In the evening, she went out of the house until she was sure he had taken the word to her room and gone away. When after several evenings of intense Listening, she heard no call for the, from the darkness in the orchard. She was half beside herself with grief and decided that for her there was no way to break through the wall that she, that had shut her off from the joy of life. Of life. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can see here even more of her confusion. She's starting to understand that. There's got to be some physical contact there, but does she seem ready for that? No. 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 Yeah, no. She, yeah, no, not at all. I mean, she says, you know, she thinks to herself that um, the, the age old woman's desire to be possessed and had taken possession of her, but so vague was her notion of life. Basically saying that she thought she understood what was going to happen, but she really has no idea. And if you notice her note to John Hardy, she first says, I want someone to love me and to be loved by someone. She doesn't say, I want to have sex with you. <laughs> she says, I want to be loved. And um, she she's too naive to understand that he's going to take it as, I want to have sex with you. Um, so she's very confused. And yet she also is, how does, how does she feel when he doesn't respond? Mm. Oh, that's a few. Say that again. Uh, what was your question? How, d How does she feel when he doesn't respond to her note? She felt sad. Say that again. She felt sad. Yeah, yeah she's she... upset about it. Yeah, she's definitely upset about it. Um, what do you think this does to her self-esteem? What does this do for her feeling of isolation and aloneness? Increase, maybe? Say that again? Increase? Yeah, I, yeah it definitely doesn't do anything to, um, to help her feel any better about herself. Um, she, if anything, she feels worse. Um, and the text tells us that um, she was half beside herself with grief and decided that for her there was no way to break through the wall that had shut her off 
from the joy of life. So she doesn't feel that there's really anything that she's ever going to be able to do, excuse me, that's going to make her feel happy in life, that she's just going to be miserable forever. Mm. It's, it's kind of sad. I mean, it's, it's a really sad, um, sad case of, of this girl's life, that she's grown up feeling so unloved, so alone, and she's reaching out for love in all the wrong ways. I mean, just um, all the wrong ways. So. All this happened because the lack of experience, right? Say that again? Uh, I said that uh, all this happened because the lack of experience. Yes, I think a lot of it, yes, a lot of it is happening because of her lack of experience, because she doesn't have any idea how the world works. Um, she doesn't understand that men or boys of that age think not with this head, but with the other one. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't get that. So that's a problem in itself. Um, another problem is the fact that she's grown up feeling so alone and isolated. She yeah, grew she up. Sorry, so she doesn't have anyone to talk, uh, talk with. No, not at all. She has no girlfriends to talk to. She's never had a mother. Her father has always hated her. Um, so you can imagine that if you grow up with a dad, especially a young girl, if you're growing up with a father who mm -hmm. never wanted you you're constantly then going to seek the affection of men because you've never had that affection and love from a man. I mean, the first, the first hero, the first um, man that a young girl loves is her daddy, is her father. And she's never had that. So she's just, she's, we have this expression that we would say that she is a lost soul. She's a lost soul. So, okay. so she just she doesn't really understand life she doesn't really know what she wants out of life um what she's trying to get out of life and it's it's very understandable um what she wants i mean she wants love um but it's hard to understand the way that she's going about it unless you've been in her shoes so um which i never have and i doubt anybody here has so mm. does anybody have anything she else get along. Uh -huh, go ahead. she never get along with her sisters say that again she never get along with her sisters no no and those really aren't her sisters you know she's just living with this family and from the very beginning they have disliked her because she is so good in school and they're not She's like a straight A student and they're like maybe C students. So they're jealous of her. So they treat her very badly. They okay. treat her very badly. Maybe someone could have recommend her uh, a book called a French book called Madame Bovary. That's a great book. Madame Bovary. Madame Bovary. Yeah, that's a fabulous, fabulous book. I studied that in school, too. Yeah, Madame Bovary is great. Yeah, but who, but the, the thing is, is who would suggest that to her? She really has nobody. No one yeah, she has no one, no one to talk to. So, yeah, it's, um, it's sad. What do you guys, any, uh, Tell me what else you guys think about about Louise. Now, remember, when we read before, we see, like I said, we're taking a trip back in time here. Because when we first saw Louise, she is married. She's the mother of David Hardy. And what is her attitude? What's she like when we first read about her? She was always angry. Always angry? What else? She always stays, stays in her room. Always stays in her room. What else? She, she drinks. <laughs> drunk yeah. Half the <laughs> yeah, she's she's <laughs> drunk half the time. Um, so predictions, because um, 
I'm going to have to set up the next hangout. Predictions. Do you think that, because we know, like I said, we know that she eventually marries John Hardy, but do you think that this is going to end well? That her path no. that she's taking is going to work out how she's imagining it in her head? No. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No. 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 What do you think might happen? What do you think might happen? He just 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 did or just didn't find hope to to live together. Say that again. I think that he, he just just didn't find hope to live together. Okay. I think she's gonna have some serious psychological problems. Some serious, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I think she was expecting something, and after getting married, discover something else. Mm. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That she still has, um, she still has this idea of this fairy tale yeah, life. Yes, she was a perfect boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now we know that she. Um, uh oh, what did I do? Um, I just pressed a button that I don't know what I did to my computer. It's like, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, I fixed it. Um, <laughs> so I, I made it go like full screen and all my tabs and everything like went away. So, um, yeah. So let me give you guys the link for the next class and we'll continue talking about Louise. Do you guys think she's going to get pregnant? Before or after they get married? Um, before. 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 Before? Okay. All right. So, all right. So there's the link. I'm going to go um, set that up. We'll meet back in four minutes, and we will continue uh, reading about Louise, finish up with this, and then um, we will jump back into um, Jesse Bentley. So... Yeah. I'll okay. see you guys okay. in four okay. minutes. Okay. Thank Bye. you, Shanae. See you soon. See you. See you. See you.